what I will do is I'm going to go live here into my image. I'm running a VR image. It's got all of the business object software. And let's talk about the topic of the day. This is probably the number one topic I get requested for for presenting for user group meetings, internal user group meetings, uh, question and answers, uh, conferences that I attend, such as the IBIS conference in the old SAP days, pending others as well, is how do I handle multiple data sources, data providers? That is the correct term. I've had the opportunity to work with this product for 24 years now. I saw it all the way back to the old Desky days through its transition to the uh, to the world of Webby and all the uh, bells and whistles that have come along with it. And the products come a long way. Uh, the area that I get the most questions is always multiple data providers. How do I query my data? How do I bring in those multiple queries and link them all together called merging? Okay. You can do a lot of extensive merging with Webby. If you're a Tableau user, I can tell you safely from my experience of working with the product, they have their own process of, of bringing things together. And if you're used to that, it'll be the same here, having something that you can link or merge together so that all of your data synchronizes properly as well. Right? What's nice about Webby is it gives you the ability to bring in a multiple data providers. That was one of the questions was that somebody filled out when they registered was external data. Of course, I can bring in external data. I can bring it in from a universe. I can bring it in from Excel. Recently, they uh, speeded up the process of doing it from text. I can do freehand SQL. There's a 4.3 feature. I've been working with the new release, which is beta only, for since December. And they actually have the ability where you can bring your report back in as a data provider. There's an interesting twist. I can actually use my report as a subsequent data source and in turn merge it back in to the document itself. That makes it very, very nice. We're going to show you how to bring in multiple queries and merge them together. I had a question on uh, how can you add to a merge that's already there. People not aware, probably because they didn't have any formal training, that there is a way to add to a merge without having to unmerge first to relay things back together. We'll talk about all of that as well. Um, so I'm running in 4.2 Service Pack 7. I don't have 8 installed because it's strictly a maintenance release only. There were no enhancements. I could spend an entire hour session just on new features, which I'm not doing today, but to highlight it. But I'll highlight some things along the way as we go uh, through this process as well. We'll open it up for questions at the end. And, uh, and if you're unable to get them that way, you always have the ability with my email address, which I posted earlier as well. So hopefully uh, everybody can see me and everybody can hear me clearly. That's the key for me. And so let's talk, talk a little bit about this. How extensive can you go? Well, I have one of my clients. I haven't been there doing any training for quite a while, but we've done training and consulting a long time back. They're located out east. You're sitting out there in the audience right now. You're one of my favorite classic examples where I actually saw a document that the customer had created that had 70 data providers in one document. 70 data providers. Oh, it was a mixture of DB2 tables, and I believe there was SQL Server. I am not 100%. A lot of Excel files and so on. My point is Webby can handle that kind of volume, that kind of complexity very easily. It's an amazing thing to see, to be able to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and actually build a document with multiple queries. And we'll review all the different things that you need to do. And again, my handout does a very good job of giving you the core basics. Uh, there's some extended stuff that I will demo that I don't have in the best practice guide. It's in our course book. And by the way, what we're covering today would be a subset of our advanced course, Chapter 2. We have an entire dedicated chapter on doing multiple queries and multi-day providers. It's a two, two and a half hour module. It gives you the ins and outs and secrets and gives an opportunity to do some very good hands-on as well. You need training if you're going to want to do it right and learn all the tricks of the trade. So you notice I'm on the, I have the Home and Documents tab. I'm on the Home tab right now. We're going to create a new document. I'm going to come down here and select that. And I'm running forward to SP7, so you see a few different things. Here's the infamous blue-gray screen that you always get. I'm going to hit the New button. I want to create a new document. All right. Notice the extended window. This is SP7 or 6 or 7. Uh, one of my handouts that I give you in training only is a, is a summary of new features, the giant matrix we put together showing all the SAP features by service pack level. So if you're in 4.2 SP3, what you get is going to be a little bit different than SP4 or 5 or 6 or even 7. It would be nice to know, well, we've taken care of that. We've also built a cross-reference guide for the new features. That tells you where in our courseware you can find all of these uh, unique new features, so you have some examples to work off of as well. 
it's unfortunate. A big percentage of the people I see in the marketplace all around the U.S. and Canada are missing out on so many features. They moved to 4.2, never had any training or any extensive examples to go through, and are missing out on a lot. So I want to keep that in mind. But notice all my choices. Universe, Excel, now text is available. Freehand SQL, this is a popular one customers like to turn off. Kind of mixed emotion on it. But we're going to be doing universes today, and I'm going to throw a little Excel feature in. We could spend an entire hour on Excel. In fact, one of my presentations is called Excelling It in Webby. It could be potentially a good future one because dealing with Excel files, there's a lot of things you can do, a lot of things to watch out for. We're going to stick to Universe for the first round. We'll do a Universe. We'll use the infamous and very boring e-fashion Universe for this. And when you're starting to build reports that are going to actually a document that's going to have queries from multiple data sources, you need to start thinking big picture right up front. What do I need to bring from each of my various queries or data provider sources? You're looking for measures. You're looking for financial numbers, uh, revenue numbers, uh, quantity sold, could be uh, all kinds of things. But you're looking for numbers, but they're going to be based on what? What's the key building block in any Webby document? Dimensions. That's your structure. You have to have dimensions that are common across your multiple queries. No different in Excel. I can't link data together if there's not anything common. We all know that in the world of business objects, in the world of Webby, from the universe definition, dimensions are our structural components. What define how our data is broken out is an excellent definition for that as well. So in our examples, what we're going to do is we're going to keep it simple. When I do this presentation and modifications of it, we could make it very complicated, throw a lot of different dimensions out there, and then lose you in the process of covering it. We broke it down to make it more basic, so it's easy for you to see the concepts, take the handout, and all you got to do is extrapolated to a more complex example following the simple rules. So here's the look for the query panel in the HTML version. I'm in 4.2, Service Pack 7, okay, but I'm running HTML. I don't need applets anymore. I don't need Java. Make sure you switch that over on preferences to, for, from uh, applets to, Java, to HTML so you take full advantage of all of the HTML specific features that are really, really cool. There was one question out there about how do I find out what version I'm in? Well, there's a help menu drop down. It has an about inside of it. You'll see me popping it up. And it tells you service 4.2, service pack 7. It might even give you secondary levels on top of that. That's important because if you're trying to use a new feature and you're in the wrong service pack level, it's not going to work. So there's an easy way to take care of that question as well. So in my particular case, what I'm going to do is this. There's some little subtleties. You notice the arrows, which you don't see in the Java version. Other little look things that are in look and feel, but that's okay. We're going to be using quarter and month to keep it basic. Real life, probably year, quarter, month, but I'm going to bring over quarter and month as my primary dimensions, and those dimensions are going to be the ones that are going to be common across all my data sources. You can have different combinations of it. I might be linking two or three data providers that, go, that might go to year, quarter, month. I might have two or three other queries I'm going to bring into the same document and merge a different way, maybe just based on year, quarter. So you have that flexibility but you've got to have the dimensions. Some of the newer features in the reporting side, like uh, in, intra-document linking, where I can link a, a report or a chart to another one on another tab, the same implication is there. I need a dimensional or multiple dimensional objects so that I have something common to link those together. Okay. So I've got quarter and month for my query. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring in two of the measures, sales revenue, quantity sold. Okay. And I've picked out what I needed. I've got two dimensions. I know from planning up front, and you have to do a good job of planning, what are my dimensions that I absolutely have to believe to bring in to be able to merge these together? We got it licked right there, quarter month. Notice query tab on the bottom. Most of us typically might work with only one report or report with one query, so you don't really pay attention to that tab. But every query that you add to that document gets its own separate query tab. And it's nice to take advantage of and rename it. I'm going to rename this one by doing a right-click rename. It doesn't support double-clicking in the HTML version, so I just got to do it this way. Call it eFashion number one. And just like in reporting, make sure your tabs names, when you put names into those report, or in this case, query tabs, stay away from special characters. Webby will come back and haunt you later on in certain situations if you have a dash or things like that. In the old days, it didn't matter, but then it, uh, later on, it proved to be an issue later. So I've got quarter month sales revenue quantity sold. Rename my query. I'm good to go. We can run that. We know we can take a look at it. Let's see what we get. And I'll get my very first document to come up. I'm going to 
hat looks like this. And there it is. Wait a minute. Take a close look, everybody. Look at the template. Look at the color. Brand new. And this, I believe, was an SP7 feature. You no longer get the blue background with white lettering for the names of the objects, different shading, and whatever else. That's automatic now in the 4.2. I believe it's an SP7. It's gotten so big across the service tech levels, I don't remember exactly where they are anymore. Now, if you would open up an existing document, duplicated one of your report tabs, then it would have carried the older format forward. But because this is a brand new one, it chose to do it that way. Some of the many subtleties with the new HTML version, uh, little bonuses we pick up uh, as part of that as well. So there's my document, nothing fancy about it. It's got quarter one, two, three, four, our months one through 12, and our sales revenue quantity sold. So we need to go back to the query panel. We decided that we needed to bring in another data source. Could be another query from a universe, could be a text file, could be an Excel file, could be free and or all of the above. Webby says, I'm happy, as long as you've got those defined properly along the way. As you know, two ways to go back to the query panel, our standard ribbons across the top, thanks to Mr. Bill Gates from Office 2007, we have those ribbons. Under data access, over on the left is edit, but we always have our infamous shortcut button over here that says, Take me back to the query panel. And there it is. All right. So now I need to add a second query. One of my best practice rules, and I go through a whole checklist of items in our advanced course in Chapter 2. I won't have time for all of them, but we'll talk about them here, is you don't want to have multiple queries against the same universe when one query will do the job. All right. Well, I'm going to violate that for a reason, for a very good reason, for a very real-life scenario that probably the biggest percentage of you probably run into. I'm going to go back and add another query, okay, and it'll be from a universe, and I'm going to pick the same universe. The moment you do something like that, a little light bulb in your brain needs to go off and say, is this correct? Should I be doing it this way, or should I have edited an earlier query and added it on into that query and still have one query versus two? Well, in this case, we're going to talk about that. So we're going to do an OK. Query panel number two comes up. Always rename your query tabs. Always. It's a map. Can you imagine my friends that had the one with 70 queries? Calling them default names of query one through query 70 is not cool. How do you make changes? Right click rename is the only way it works because we're in HTML and not in Java. And we're going to call this one e fashion number two. Okay. And we'll stick that out there like you see right there for part of that. And now we need to figure out what to bring in. Well, this is the second query, and I want to merge it back with the first query. So I can create a combined report, bringing the measures from both queries together. So I need quarter and month as a minimum. If I don't have quarter and month, or you know, then how I'm going to link them together at that level? I could bring quarter only, but then that's going to limit me and my ability. Quarter and month. Now I'm going to go down to the measures, and I'm going to grab margin and discount. And right here, the light bulb in your brain should always go off, and that little light bulb should say, wait a minute. This is another query against the same universe. Am I doing this correctly? Under normal circumstances, I would say no. All I had to do is go back to query one, add the additional two on the end, rerun the query. When I'm back in the report viewer window, as you all know, it won't automatically be dragged into the report, but it will show up as an available object to be dragged in. But here's the situation why I did this. Many, many of you, and this is probably a very high percentage of people run into this, you might have a universe that's got some design issues missing a critical join, uh, something like that. Could be anything related to that. Could be a context issue for you advanced users as well, where there's something with the way that the tables are joined that creates a problem. Were you to try to do it as a single query, you get the typical incompatible objects or some other uh, unknown message that you're not really sure what it's saying, but you have a compatibility issue. This happens all the time with customer sites that I'm at. So in order to get around it, we're going to take query number one and take one slice of that universe. Query number two to take a different slice. Now that I've separated them out, now I can bring them back together in my document, take the two data providers, and merge those together. So we're going to assume that that was the case right here. Prior versions of Webby, prior to version four, there was an auto merge feature that was automatically turned on so that every time you added another query to a document that already had a query from that same universe, it would auto merge. And I hated that when I would teach this to you in 3.1, I would tell you, you don't want that feature turned on. You need to control that. Just because it says it could be merged doesn't mean you want it merged. Webby in version 4 doesn't do that. 4.0, 4.1, 4.2, we have to do it ourselves, which is great. 
So I said, well, okay, now I've got my second query loaded. Maybe I've got one of those funny looking uh, universes that has an issue. So I go up to run query and all of a sudden run query says run queries, plural. And you click the down arrow and you get an opportunity to say, do I want to run the first one, which I did earlier, the second one, which I'm building right now, or do I want to run them all? While you're working on query number two, i.e. fashion number two, I could have gone back to number one and thrown a where clause, a filter in there. Maybe added more objects, took objects out. So if you don't know that what you've changed or not, then you'd always want to refresh them all. I don't need to run eFashion number one anymore. It's done. I only need to run number two. So that's what we'll do. Keeping in mind, I cannot lose sight of what if I made a change to eFashion number one. Look how the naming convention helps guide me through. Could you imagine that was query one and query two for the name? Makes it a little diff difficult to decipher. So if I run eFashion number two, watch what happens. The new report wizard comes up automatically. It's going to pop up here in a minute. And it says, okay, now for this new query that you're adding to an existing document that already has a query, what would you like me to do with the output? Oh, let's stick it in a new report tab. That's the best choice as a new user. Let's just stick it on the one I'm already on. That's not a good choice because now you have two reports sitting next to each other, each from a different query. Bring them along and don't do anything except put them in the available objects. Ultimately, that's what you'll become when you become a more advanced user and you said, just bring it all in. I'll figure out what I'm going to drag into the report block later on as well. We'll do an okay and let it ride. And now here, report number one, query quarters one, two, three, four, sales revenue quantity sold. Report number two is over here. It has quarters one, two, three, and four with all the corresponding months and it has margin and discount. Let me move that over a little bit just to make it more viewable. Notice on the left side, all of my available objects. The moment you go beyond one query, whenever you're working with and creating a new Webby document, you need to remember to do the following. Go down to the bottom here, in the lower part of the available objects window, click the down arrow, and what you want to do is you want to say query, sort it by query. That's what you need to do so you can figure out which dimensions and measures are coming from which query. So you can figure out what do I need to merge, what do I not need to merge, what am I trying to pull in. And again, here's two of them. Notice the naming convention, how cool that was. eFashion 1, eFashion 2. Awesome. Now it's helping me out saying, hey, uh, this is what, it, what you renamed it to. It makes it a lot easier to map. Well, we've got two reports out there. First one from query number one. Second from one query number two. We want to combine them together. We want to get all the measures on one document. But we could play with either one of those. We'll just leave those alone. We'll add a new report using our speed menu from reporting. And again, your multi-selecting functionality. Let's take quarter and month and sales revenue and quantity sold from query one, along with margin and discount from query two, standard multi-select. We'll drag it across in mass and bingo, there we go. And there is my combined report. Look at that. Okay. So we've got to be careful now to make sure we understand what's going on here. The quarter came from query number one, along with the month. Okay. And you notice it does a qualifier up in the formula bar, as it always does in Webby. Whatever you click on, it tells you Something about that, whether it's an object or a function that's performing or something like that. In this case, we need to be very careful. Whenever you create a combined report where you're spanning multiple queries, you need to make sure that the dimensions, the primary dimensions that are common in all of your queries, in this case, both of them, come from a single source. In other words, you don't dare take the quarter from query number one and the month from query number two. What if they have different types of data, different sets of data? The data may not map up. So the, the implied, the implication here is, has always been quarter and month from the first query or the quarter and month from the second query. Either one would be fine. I just happen to pick the first. But if you notice quarter and month, and, they do, and it does give you a qualifier, automatically self-documenting, one of the great features of Webby everywhere. It's been enhanced in 4.2 now about service pack five or six. It gives you the ability to put comments in now for local variables. So if you can find any variables over here, there's a self-help message now. Awesome, awesome feature. Okay. So what we got to do here then, um, uh, we got to follow our way across and you'll see that the sales revenue quantities sold are correct. For every quarter and month, the values are broken out at the quarter month level. That's because sales revenue quantities sold came from the same query as quarter and month. But notice margin and discount, not an error. They're grand total values, grand totals. Webby's flashing the neon lights at you and saying, you know what? You didn't merge those two queries together. So therefore, when you told me to put margin and discount in this block, which is driven by this quarter and month, 
I don't have the ability to break it out, so I'm just going to give you a grand total for every value. That's just how it works. Well, there's nothing wrong. We didn't do the we didn't do all of our work. We haven't done our homework. We now need to go in and figure out what do I need to link. And linking is what we used to call it, and they call it merging and linking. It's back to merging again. We need to merge our dimensions together or link them so that all the numbers synchronize. Now, if I were to reverse this and put the quarter and month from Corey 2 in here, sales revenue and quantity sold would have been grand totals, and these would have been the correct individual uh, values on a row-by-row -row basis. So we have different ways of doing the merging. This is really cool. Some of what I'm going to show you is unique to the HTML version only of Webby and not Java. So if you're a holdout, you went to 4.2 SP3 or above, and you're still using Java, um, I can only recommend you change that mindset. But if you're stuck with doing it that way, which is fine, okay, a little minor behavioral differences. I cover a lot of great content in our training classes. We have a two-day consolidated uh, What's New in Webby 4.2. covers all the new features in depth, and we get into all the little nuances as well. Most of you are already familiar with this, so I want to merge my quarter and months. So what you're going to do is go to the Data Access tab on top. This is number one way. And you'll notice we have the good old Merge button. Let's take a quick look across. Here's an assigned reference. This is a feature that's new. I just like to throw little things in. That would allow me to go down maybe to the, uh, the 6794, or maybe I wanted the 3.73 million quarter four 12 value for sales revenue, and I wanted to make that a separate variable by itself, single value. We call that a reference cell. So it's a local variable that's single scalar. Awesome new feature as well. So what we're going to do is go hit the merge button like you would always do, and it comes back with your typical window. Notice the OK button is grayed out. What is Webby telling us? Webby's saying, uh, you don't have anything highlighted, so I don't know what to merge. What do we merge? Only dimensions, not details, not measures, not predefined filters. None of those would fall into that category. So let's go up here. You can only do one set at a time. So in other words, I need to link the two quarters. That's obvious. They do not have to have the same name. Might be QTR here and quarter here. It doesn't matter. But they got to represent the same data. They have to be the same format type. If it's 1 through 12, that's great. If it's Jan, Fed, Mar, they both better be the same. Automatic rule. It's kind of funny. If you're doing this in Tableau, it'll allow you to blend those two together. And it gives you very skewed results because it's not correct. Webby says, no, I'm not going to let you do it at all. So I could highlight the quarter in the first one using my control key, the second. Now, what if I had just brought in four queries? I could do all four at once. All right, I might have added in the four queries. Now I'm bringing them together. So it doesn't matter necessarily what order you do them in, but we'll do the quarters first. Once I do that, a new category on the left side in available object shows up. Here it is. Got quarters with the two that were merged in. I can bring a third one in later and a fourth one, a fifth one, whatever, as I need to later on. Now I'm going to go up to the merge button again because we, we're not done. We've got to do month next. If I highlight the month here, and use the control key for the month here, and I might have had more than two. And these could be a mixture of queries from universes and Excel files. It does not matter. SQLs, whatever, anything. I do an OK. And now those are merged. And look at the self-documenting feature that it automatically gives us. This is really, really cool. All my numbers are broken out all the way down the line because I've merged these two queries together based on quarter and month. And everything synchronizes itself right down. Now, let me show you an alternative way we could have done this. We're going to go down to month first. And we do a right click. And we're going to unmerge. It's going to ask me to verify. Yep, get rid of them. And then I'm going to go down to quarter and right click and unmerge. Now you can do it on an individual query basis if there were more than two. So there had been three queries under quarter or three queries under month. I might have wanted just to unmerge one of them. And it does support that, do that automatically. So what if instead, what if I had quarter highlighted and quarter highlighted here, not thinking, and I go up to hit the merge button? Bobby says, okay. All of a sudden, where's my pop-up window? Where's the pop-up window with the two queries? Webby automatically realized what you were doing. This is the HTML version, not Java, and it did it. Same for months. So I highlight month. I just happen to have those two highlighted, the correct two, by the way. And I go over and hit the merge button again, and it says, okay, we're good to go. And lo and behold, there we go. We were able to bring all of those together. The quarter and months had to be compatible between each and every one of those. There's a new feature in 4.2 introduced that allows you to merge on a local variable. So if what if a quarter, what if month in the first query was Jan, Feb, Mar, and the second query is 1 through 12, not going to work. I have an example I'll pop up at the end where I built it already. I showed you how to define it. And what I did was I defined the month numbers to the name Jan, Feb, Mar, 
then I used that local variable as part of the merge up here and it allowed it to synchronize to perfection. To perfection. We have some great examples in chapter two of our advanced class to highlight that as well. So that worked out very, very well. We've got to be careful now when we bring in quarter and month. Okay. If I bring the quarter and month from the first query, what if the first query only had quarters one and two in it? You're only going to see quarter one and two data and only months one through six in there. That's all that would show up. You're only as good as the data that's there. What if the second query had only had quarters three and four? You're only going to see quarters three and four data, but it depends which quarter and month do I bring in here. So in effect, it's acting almost like an outer join, almost like an outer join, if you think of it that way. So you have to be careful which ones you pull in. Maybe you want your base set of dimensions, the columns representing those dimensions, to be from the first query. Maybe it's a patient um, a query you're bringing in, and then a secondary query of secondary data. You would want that to be the core data, so it would probably be the patient ID that you would bring in as the proposed to bring it in from the second one. So you have to very carefully think that through. That leads to the inedible question that I get all the time, what if you want all the combinations? What if I said, well, wait a minute, I don't have to mess around with this. What if I want all the quarter and months from both queries, or three, or four, or five, whatever they are that are all merged together? That can also be done, advanced feature. What you do is go down to the merge dimension area. We'll start with the quarter. You grab, you grab the, the dimension quarter, the merge dimension quarter, it's called. We bring it up, we drop it into that cell right up here. And then we go down and grab the merge dimension month, i.e. the parent, we drop it into there. And basically, that acts almost like a, uh, almost like a union all because it's giving you all the quarter and month combinations from both queries. All right. I know for time's sake, we can't take a closer look. In our advanced reporting class, there's a fantastic example we do that shows you the before and after effect with all kinds of little wrinkles, but how important that is. This is the kind of control that you have. The ability to do inner and outer joins, union all type things as well, all part of the merging process that you see right there. Did we follow the rules? Yep, we did. Our quarter and month, in this case, happened to come from the merge dimension of the parent. So that means I get all of the months from both queries and all the quarters from both queries. You could have combinations that don't exist where there's missing data or blanks. So depending what your missing data character is, it could be a dot or something like that. So, so far, we've done really, really well. Look at, look at how things are laid out nice and neat for us. We brought in our queries. So I can go back and get rid of report tab one and two if I wanted to. I don't need those. I'm done with them. I could, but in this particular case, we'll just uh, leave those in there for right now. All right. So now let's uh, digress a little bit. Now let's talk about Excel files. Again, I have a presentation I do just on excelling it specific, um, where we get into a lot more detail levels specific to it. But what are basically going to show you is how can I then go back out and grab an Excel file and also bring that in as another data source. There was a question on that. I have customers, I have customers, some of you in on the, are actually in on the call on this webinar today from down in Cincinnati, Ohio. I've had students there where they do nothing but pull in 12, 14, 16 different Excel files. Each sheet, if the Excel file has more than one in it, is treated as a separate query. We'll show you a quick example of that here right now. We've got an Excel file that I've already created out there external to Webby. This is some general guidelines. Anytime you're using Excel files or text, they work the same way. So let's use Excel for right now. You create the Excel file outside of Webby and you import it. You update it outside of Webby and you bring it back in, but you don't import. And again, I can't get into the uh, differences in how you handle a new versus an existing Excel file within this session today, but we could use that as a future one. And I get lots of questions. The most common question is, I updated my report, changed my Excel file, and I broke the report permanently because you didn't update it correctly. So I have an Excel file out there that I already imported. How would you do that? Let's go back to the Documents tab for a second. Remember, that the report I'm working on is called New Document, so I rename it to something else. And I can work on that and open up another new document and another one and another one and open up existing. And I'll have eight, nine, ten tabs going across the top, all open at the same time where I can copy and paste between as well. Very powerful that way, and most people don't realize it. So if you go under Documents, notice under Demo, one of my subfolders, under My Favorites, I have an Excel file called eFashion that I already imported it. You would have to, have to have created this Excel file external to Webby and imported it in. Let me show you briefly how you would do that. You would go out to New, so let's say New, Local Document, typical Microsoft type browse. I'll do a Choose File. And I would point to the Excel file and I would, it'll bring it back, which I'm not going to do at this point, I already did. And I would hit the Add button and lo and behold, my Excel file was sitting there and that's what I did here. All right. 
Now, here's the problem, part of the lesson, part of the best practices that I really get into in, this, in that other presentation. Notice in demo, I have eFashion. Notice under the basic reporting subfolder, I have eFashion and, and a secondary one. And under my favorites, I have an eFashion. Not cool. Not cool at all. You now lose track of which Excel file is feeding the Webby document. You'd have to actually open up the Webby document, go back to the query panel, and look at the Excel to see what it's mapped to. You have to be very careful in managing Excel files. I suggest you put them into a single folder, and I have typically I'll create one called Excel, and you do all your importing and exporting out of there, and you use it from there as well. But we're okay. We have ours out here that I'd already imported, and it's ready to go. All right, so I already been through that process. It's quarter, month, and projected revenue. So let's go out to the new document we're working on. We're going to go back to the query panel over here on the left, click on that. And what we're going to do is add a query, but this time we're going to go to Excel. And you can mix and match. I keep mentioning this to people. People get confused. I can bring in eight or ten queries from universes, throw in a couple from Excel, maybe four from text, maybe a couple free and SQL. Webby doesn't care. Just got to make sure that you've done a huge job of planning up front. They have all of the necessary dimensions from all the queries to merge them together correctly, like we just did earlier. So we're going to do from Excel. Now, if I hadn't imported the Excel file at this point, I could go to the Documents tab and do that. It's one thing it's very forgiving that way. But I already took care of it. It's in Demo, and here's the one I want to use, eFashion. That looks good. Let's open that one up. And it comes back what's called the Customer Data Provider Window. It basically shows me what it's pointing to, where it's coming from. So that's how you can qualify which Excel file and which of my folders under my documents is it using. It's right here. If it's got multiple sheets, you have to do one sheet per query. So I can add this query for sheet number one, and I can do a second, add another query from Excel, repeat this again, change this to a second, and it separates out each sheet into separate queries that I can easily merge together. That's what separates us from Excel, the ability to do that quickly and easily as well. And you can dump these Excel files out and feed them into your Tableau or Power BI if you want. But he does a good job. Notice first row contains column names. Yep. I need my Excel files to be data files only, data silos, with the title data, title data, title data, left to right, all the way across, with row one containing column names. Okay. So this is a third query we're bringing into where I already have two. Notice query three at the bottom. We're going to be a smart user. We're going to rename that, and we'll call it Excel. Now, I might give it a more specific name if I'm bringing in more than one Excel, but I don't need to do that. And now it brings up what I like to call the pseudo query panel. It's not a true query panel. It doesn't have a uh, filtering section for us to do query filters and whatever. Uh, one of the enhancements we've been requesting of the Paris developers, and I work very closely with them, by the way, is the ability to do filtering in an Excel file. We're being told that maybe in 4.3 we'll see it. In my few months working with it, about four with the new version, I haven't seen it yet, but you never know. So I said, okay, well, there's my quarter month. And notice the data preview allows me to refresh, even for an Excel file. And there's quarters one, two, three, four, months one through 12. And this is the projected revenue that I'm trying to get into my document well, that we already built, the quarter month document that we already built. So we're going to go up to run queries. We don't need to run query number one or two. We've already taken care of those. We're done. We're going to run Excel only. We're going to get the insert new report wizard like before. It says, what do we do with this? Well, we'll just stick it on a separate report. And if I go out to report tab number three out here, there's my that was the combined report. By the way, let's need, rename that one quarter month, QTR month. I usually do that. I don't know how I missed that one. And report number four is the Excel file. We have a problem. Very common problem new users run into all the time. You and I just saw a minute ago when I built that query, or pseudo query, when I hit the refresh to view the data, to preview it, it showed all 12 months for the quarters. What's different? Well, this is where, again, being a smart user, you take a look at what you have available to you, you look at the available objects on the left side, you go down to Excel and say, well, there's quarter and month. Wait a minute, month's a measure. Where did that come from? Webby's telling you, hey, when you bring in Excel files, the way it's always handled this all the way back to the old desky days some 24 years ago, you'd look at column one of your Excel file and the old classic dimension or measure. That was quarter, you one, two, three, four. Mixed character string has to be dimension. Comes to column number two and sees months one through 12 and says, ah, I get off easy. It's a straight number, so I don't have to worry about it. You're going, whoa, 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 wait a minute. The typical user goes, oh man, now I got to go back out to Excel 
reopen up the Excel file, change that column to character, figure out how to re-import it correctly into the one and use it from there. Webby said, no, one-stop shopping. I will do it all for you. I will take care of it. So if we go back to the query panel and edit that query, very easy, as you will see. And I pick the Excel query tab to go to the Excel one. And if I click on month, it allows me to change that one. Tighten it up a little bit. Back to a dimension. And normally, as an experienced user, you would have caught that right up front. That's why I like having these little icons that represent dimensions, measures, details, or attributes, because they kind of clue you in on what's going on. Okay? So I'll go back. I'll just run all three of them. I'm too lazy just to do the drop down. And we'll refresh all of them. So we're just refreshing Excel. And now my Excel file, son of a gun, quarters one, two, three, four, all the way down the line. And there's my projected revenue. And again, I could get rid of report tabs one, two, and four right now if I wanted to. I don't need them. They're all over here in the available objects. Okay. So what we needed to do all along, what our objective was, is to bring in another data source. I needed Excel to get the projected revenue. That's not sitting in our universes out there because that's the, the universe might represent data in DB2 or SQL Server or Oracle, and it's history. Well, I'm doing projections. That's not going to be in any universe. So we're going to drag the projected revenue right onto the end of the report. Uh, well, not this one. we got to go to the quarter month report where we pull two queries together. We're going to do three now. We're going to drag this in over here. Look for a little uh, up and down blue chip. So we put it along the right edge. And lo and behold, there it is. If you're having a problem dragging columns in and out of a report block, okay, you might remember a feature from charting called Assign Data. It does an awesome job of allowing you to, outside of charting, just in plain old reporting where you can actually go in and you can assign data that way. Uh, so if I would have had the block highlighted, let me cancel out. If I would have had the block highlighted here and gone to assign data, it would allow me to um, add objects in, take objects out, and so on in there. It always gives you an absolute way of dragging things in and out and controlling it as well. Now, if you look at the projected revenue, we have a real interesting problem. Grand total again. So now what is that telling us? Well, the quarter and month combination up here, if you look over on the left side, this is where you want to use the tools that Webby creates for you. You'll see that the quarter and months are merged, but only on two queries. I need a third. I said, well, that's easy to fix. What we'll do is this. We'll use the data access tab, and we'll select the merge, and we'll select quarter and quarter and quarter to do all three together. And notice the OK button says, nope, ain't going to work. It ain't going to do it for you. What's Webby telling us? Nope. Now, wait a minute. We did this a few minutes ago when I brought the two original queries in. When that popped up, I selected them, hit the, uh, the, the OK button, became available, and I did it. What's different? Ah, we're adding to a merge that's already there. We had a question from one of you out there on this. This happens all the time. What most people do is what we used to have to do when the very first 4.0 release came out. They forgot about this, because you would have to unmerge all the months, all the quarters, and then do them all collectively all over again, adding in the additional ones that you want. Now, for the one client of mine that's out there, and you know who you are, where you have the document with approximately 70, as it was told to me, can you imagine having to unmerge to remerge? That would be an absolute nightmare. Webby said, no, 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 no. They fixed this back in 4.1. Actually, it was 4.0, service pack 7 or 8, something like that. They gave us the ability to add to a merge that's already there. And this is your ticket out for all of you, all right, things that you learned in the training. What I want to do is I want to link the quarter from the Excel into the ones that are already merged and do the same for months. So here's how it works. Go out there. We're going to go out to the quarter, the merge dimension quarter, the parent, select it, control key to hold it. Then we're going to go up, pick the quarter inside of Excel. Note, ignore the graying out. Whenever you're doing merging and stuff, it always has this bad habit of graying things, even though it really isn't graying it out. You see that happen right here. If you right click your mouse and you have the right combination, teeny tiny little button called add to merge says, here I am, use me. I hit the add to merge, it instantaneously changes the numbers. You notice they're now quarterly totals instead of grand totals. Then I go back to the month here in the merge dimension and the month under Excel. Do a right click, add to merge to add those back into the mix. And lo and behold, the magic is done. And there we go. And we're able to bring all of those back into the mix. Work very, very nicely. Notice arranging by query, so, so important. Making sure that I have my queries, each of my individual queries with unique names. So I know that was the first query from eFashion, the second, and then I pulled one in from Excel. 
And again, I could bring in a eight, nine, 10 more Excel files. Maybe that Excel file had more than one sheet. I would treat it like another query, add it in. And on that one screen we saw for Excel file, I would select the appropriate sheet and that pulls it back into a separate query. We can lay it all out across the page as you see right there, all right? I don't need the other supportive documents that are out here. That one would do it for us. So let me show you one last thing. What if I go back to, to add a data provider and I add another query, but a different universe. Just gonna show you something. And we'll pick uh, universes again. We'll pick the, the island resorts instead, something different. And we go out to sales and we pick up the quarter and the month from this one. And we pick up the revenue. This is a travel universe or travel data source universe. So we want to bring the travel data in with our other revenue. And we might want to rename query four. We want to be a smart user, do a rename. And we're going to call it uh, Island Resort. And we'll do an OK on it. And now we'll run query number, the Island Resort query. Excuse my mistyping, but uh, that doesn't affect anything that we're doing. And I insert that into a report. And as you look at report number five, we have a very interesting problem. Notice the format for month. For the first three queries, month is one through 12. For query number four, it's Jan Feb Mart. We have a problem. I can define a new variable that says, that redefines the month over here from Feb Jan to one, Feb to two, and so on. Or I could do the converse. I could go out to the e-fashion and take the month there that's one through 12 and make it Jan Feb Mart. That's what you end up having to do. It has problems if you, Create a local variable that looks like a number, like the month number. It will not allow you to merge on it. It's, it's a quirky little thing. I don't know if it's a bug, because I'm a very unique way of looking at that. So what I would have to do is I would have had to take the e-fashion month, and if it's one, make it Jan, two, make it Feb. Then I can merge on that local variable that's here. Well, to save you that little headache, I already built it for you. Just to give you a brief glimpse to see what it looks like. It's called partial. I believe that's where I stuck it. No, I think it was in this one here, multiple DP. Let me modify it. Right click modify. I remember which one I stuck it in. Whether it was this one or not. Uh, yeah, the variables month, yep. And here's here's where I took the month number. Okay, and I have a month name here where I, what I did was for the month name, let's open month name up so you can see it. If he fashioned one was month was equal to one, then I did a Jan, else two, make it a Feb. So I drove it off of eFashion and then I merged on that one. So there's an example. We actually have a really comprehensive one we do in our training for that one as well. Uh, for time's sake, I'm not going to get a closer look at that, but I wanted you to get a feel for what it is. You do have to include the merge one and the original one in here, and then you can selectively hide the columns to make it work. But this works fantastic for merging multiple queries together where you don't have common format type. You know, the month number was different from one versus the other. So here's a month number version of it that I created the opposite way. So if this month was Jan then one, I did it both ways. It only worked by merging on the month name. It, it had an issue with the fact that it was a number over here. So notice the new description box for the help message as well. It really does a nice job. You can see there's a lot going on. In this particular example, because the quarter and month, um, the, uh, where's my, Report three. Uh, this is the, the report, the one from, oh, this is the one we're working on. I wanted to go back to this one here, back to the new document one we're working on here. I can't, unless I redefine the variable and merge it, I don't do that. The only other choice I have is I could take the quarter month report and duplicate it, okay, and just name it quarter QTR, QTR for quarter only. This is what sometimes you have to do. You don't want to merge it. Take the month out of that query because it's going to be of no use. And by removing the month, oh, we're, we're yeah, so it leaves me quarter, sales revenue, quantity, sold margin, discount, of projected revenue. We're only going to the quarter level because that's the only level that's supported over here on the left side. As you see there, and I can only, oh, we didn't merge that one back in for the, um, yeah, we did, there it is. I could add in the fourth query for Island Resorts revenue here that one on the end here, get it right in the right spot. It's finicky for me, but we'll get it in there. And there's the revenue, the grand total. So now all I got to do is go down to quarter here and the quarter in Island Resorts, do a right click, add to merge. The merge them in instantly does it. 
and there's your map for it as well. Now, if that add to merge is confusing or a little tough for you to sort out or filter, you can just unmerge all of them and then remerge them all using this standard feature that you saw up here where we did the merge up there. So it's six of one half dozen the other. This is an amazingly powerful feature of the product. Two major reasons why this product continues to rock and roll in, in the world of reporting. And the visualization products do not do reporting anywhere at all like what you get here is because of number one, the universe concept overlaying the top. And number two, the ability to add as many different queries within a single document and merge them any combination of ways. You got an opportunity to see it right there as well. Now let me drop this down then. Let's go back. So uh, back here, make sure I get in the right spot here. Here, what I'm going to do, let me open up the little thing here on the, on the right side. And we've got lots of people out there. Uh, what I'll do is I'll all make everybody so I mean, all attendees. Now, if you have any background noise on yours, please do me a favor and turn it off. What I'll try to do is see if we can do question and answer here. So if anybody wants to um, ask any questions, if you'd rather hold off and do it later on, you can always do it by dropping me an email. Uh, my email, let me pop it up for one second. I'll come back to Accelerate. Keep my email address handy. That's a really good one to have. And over on Accelerate side, I'm just going to announce that we'll be offering general public class to Accelerate for the first time on May 4th, 5th for basic intermediates, offered as a bundle. In May 8th, all 100% remote. I've been teaching remote or virtual classes for 25 years or more, even outside of business objects. I'm a pro at it. You can take the training with extensive hands-on. Uh, come prepared to work, because our classes are very heavily geared towards hands-on with lots of complex examples. In the classes, you'll get 25 to 30 best practice guides, which one of them is going to be the one I'm going to give you for this session. We did today, another one you would have gotten a couple weeks ago from our last session there as well. Now, questions, anybody? I think I got everybody unmuted. Thought I did. Hey, Michael, this is Mickey Gracken. Yes, fire away. Question? Hello? Did I lose you? Still there? Yep, I'm still here. Somehow I got muted again. <laughs> I'm staying away from the mute button. So fire away. Okay. Um, the merging, can you show an example of where you want to pull dimensions in from two different queries? Because obviously Webby is built to do it with measures, but when you've got dimensions you want to pull in, it's a little bit more tricky. Well, with measures, you the purpose of bringing the measures in is to have one primary one that dominates that report or chart block and not have multiples in there. If you had to bring a secondary one in, one's got to be the dominant one. They both can't dominate at the same time. And you could get around it by having a unique name and maybe changing it to a detail or an attribute from a measure. And that would be the only way. Other than that, when you create the report block, I can only have one quarter in it. I can only have one month in it by, by default uh, as dimensions. Uh, this, that's how the report actually limits itself. If it's something a bit more than that, uh, I'd have to see what you were doing with it. Okay. Thanks. Other questions out there? Anybody? Hopefully I'll get some emails on it later. Again, two and a half, about two, two and a half hour module in our advanced course just on multiple data providers. Excel files and freehand SQL, which I didn't do, but can be done very easily as well. Uh, hey, Michael, this is Sridhar here. I have a quick question. Uh, sure. If there's a repeat topic on this, would you be able to include uh, the reason for uh, multi-value errors and data sync errors when doing merge? Specifically included, normally I would have to look at what you're trying to do in order to see why you're getting the errors. Um, it's documented well online, but um, uh, usually it's a mismatch on your data. There's a problem with your data, with the dimensions. If you have a specific one, send it along to me. I'd like to see it. And then maybe I can okay, answer sure. that one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, this Other is for yeah, this is Fred Canal. I got a question. What is the difference between the uh, Java versions and HTML versions? The Java version, it's going to use the Java interface. That's what it was historically all the way through 4.2. And then, and it, but you had both versions for quite a long time.
but the right. HTML version only had probably 30% of the functionality of the Java version. And then 4.2 SP3 comes along, that's like 99% compatible with Java. So now, well, the problem with Java is you had to have exactly the right version of Java installed. Right. If you had other applications running Java, it didn't matter. You had to have that particular Java version that Webby was associated with, takes longer to load, and so on. Right. That, and then you were limited to what? What browser? What's the only browser that supported it? IE. So by going to HTML, it runs quicker, faster, less overhead. You can run any browser you want. SAP recommends Chrome. They're, the new 4.3 version recommended Chrome as well, but it works with Chrome, IE, Firefox, whatever. You have to do some settings. And it gives you a lot more functionality, a lot more flexibility. For example, I showed you how that merge took place automatically. That was because I was in the HTML version and not the Java. The real lesson there is get out of Java as soon as you can. You don't want to be in the Java business. You don't want to be limited just to IE for your browser. You want flexibility. You want power. And there's so many extra bonuses that you get, so many little things that HTML does for you over and above Java that make it really, really nice. I just highlighted a couple, but give me a couple yeah, hours. That's, and that's, a yeah, we're on 4.2 SP6 as it is right now, so I guess. I guess Which them all? Just be careful. You got to do it from preferences. Now, it should have been automatic when you did an upgrade. The upgrade should have automatically reset it from applets to HTML. But I've had a number of customer sites. One was a state agency where somebody didn't realize that, and they created some kind of an overwrite program that would automatically reset it for each user every time you came back in and reset it back to applets. Why? Yeah. I have no clue. You want HTML. It's in the preferences setting on top in the launch pad. Uh, you know, and just make sure you go in under modify and set it to HTML, and you're good to go. You can all use right. Chrome, which works very well. I use Chrome all the time. That's what I was using today, Chrome instead of IE. Okay. Thank, thank you. Is there a way uh, – hi, this is Dia um, Dreyer. Is there a way to identify where um, something is – where you have two different sources and they're different formats? So a lot of times you come across where in one file you think, you know, it's the month is February and it says two. But in one file, it's 2.00 being identified as a number. But in the other um, source, it's actually um, You're breaking up the text. Clearly. Let me turn the volume up. Try again. Oh, sorry. I don't know. Um, I'm not. I, 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 yeah. yeah. They have to have the same. They have to have the same format type, not the same values. Like in my case, I had month one through 12 in one of my universes. But in my other universe, it was Jan, Feb, Mar. I cannot merge those two together that way. It will not work. And shame on Tableau for allowing you to blend those together. Uh, but Webby says, nope, they're not compatible. So I can do a define, create a local variable using the variable editor. Build an if and else expression. I just touched, I showed you briefly, for time's sake, uh, one that I built that said, if you mm -hmm. find a one for the month, make it a Jan. If you find a two, make it a Feb. And you merge on that variable. And it works to perfection. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Hi, Michael. This is Jimmy. Yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Rep? I'm here. Um, so I have a question. So if I, I don't know if uh, how I describe the situation. So for your example, you have the common uh, dimension like month order exactly match from cell and the uh, the one generated from your your query right so if I have Excel let's say I have Excel generated from other resource uh, other source um, like let's say a hundred clients there but from my query in the business object I have 60 clients so I want to merge these two together but um, um, I want to do a comparison of each client member or uh, information is missing. Do I have a way to do that in business? The report that you create, when you bring it, you're going to bring in one of the dimensions from one of the queries. Mm -hmm. So think of if you bring in, let's say it was quarter, was the one common among all three. So you bring the quarter in from your first query, whatever values, that's what you're going to see in your output. Now, if there's other, other values that came from query two or three that aren't in query one, you won't see them. If you conversely put query two's dimension in that report, you'll see all of the rows of data relative to the value that you had in query two, 
and you'll see all of those, but from one and three, no. Now, if you take the merge dimension parent, I called it, which is the one that sits above the merge ones, mm -hmm. that, like a union all, it gives you all the combinations of that dimension across all of your queries that you brought in, and you see all the rows of data that way. We have a classic example we do in our training. It's an awesome example. We use countries to make it easy, and the light bulb goes on. You go, oh, yeah, I see what you mean by that, but that's what you would do. Depends which dimension you bring in from which query. Anybody else? Thank you. All right, well, take a look at the um, uh, what I have up slide I have up there. Keep in mind you'll see something very shortly, May 4th, 5th, and 8th for general public classes virtual. I'll be teaching. I've been doing it a long time, so I'm good at it. Well, you're able to get lots of hands-on still. You get all the books and materials and so on. The best practice guides, there's about 25. Uh, you'll get a smaller scale one for this presentation that I do. Uh, I did a small one for the advanced reporting I did a couple weeks ago as well. But they're part of a library of like 25 or 30. I include my little stoplights that I do in my, some of my examples with conditional formatting. And there's advanced calculations and uh, excelling it. There's a brand new one I put together, it's, or my staff put together, it's 150 pages long, advanced dashboarding in Webby. You would be amazed what you can do in Webby versus some of the other products. There are so many things you can do uh, that really give you nice uh, visualization-like effects, you know, and does a nice job just using existing data that you have out of your universes. So, so take a look at that. If you have any other questions, let me pop mine back up, grab my email address if you didn't already. Drop me any questions you might have, or if you're unable to get the uh, follow the proper channels for the download for the handout, or if you're not able to get it for some reason, you can always let me know as well. And you know, share your experiences with some of the other users that back in your area when you're all back together. I'm sure we're all sitting in remote locations, all by or lonesome now. But uh, that might be the reason you're able to attend the webinar because you didn't have any other interruptions along the way as well. Those of you that I've known a long time, thank you. You know how I'm. Very good at resp being responsive to questions and things, trying to work up solutions. Don't send me an entire application to build for you, but questions and things. I'd be happy to uh, answer those along with my staff as well. So, so I'll stick around here, and hopefully uh, you all found a, a lot of good information out there. We kept it close to an hour. That was my goal. Gave you some question and answer time. We tried to break it down into fundamental blocks to make it easier. All the questions I had in advance looks like I was able to answer there. And uh, I think I covered them all. So have a good rest of the day. Hang in there, everybody. Crazy world we're in right now, but um, hopefully things will settle down soon. But you can always get your training. This might be a good time to get your So, And again, I thank you all for, uh, for attending the session. Thank you. Thanks. Have a nice day. Thank you. thank you all very, very, very much. Thanks, Michael. Off. Great question. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.